Tuesday, 27 January 1972, 6.55 a.m. One Gabriel Antwater of 1111 Yulio House Boulevard, Corman, New Mexico, 2311-8-115. Gives birth to the boy she simply names him. At Ramon Memorial Hospital, there is no father placed upon the birth certificate as months earlier Miss Antwater makes a claim that the joyous birth is the result of immaculate conception, not by a god, but by an art installation she rather fancied nine months earlier. It was during a visit to the Flamingo Community Art Museum in the corner of Divine Waters that Miss Antwater, who had been quite underwhelmed by most of the pieces within the museum, was overcome by an unquenchable thirst and drank from a water fountain she mistook for a water fountain that was not all actuality a water fountain, but the work of world famous artist and world fountain appreciator Marcel Duchamp. And a secret on his plan cooked up four decades earlier at a clandestine meeting in Zurich. Well, less plan and more a series of random absurdities leading to a hopeful outcome. Miss Antwater's celebration is short lived as the boy, who eventually became a man, would disappear from the hospital grounds and be placed within the confines of the recently built moon based The realization of a long gestating government project produced through the cooperation of the last remaining goddess and an East Village communal art cooperative. Upon completion of the new moon base, where humanity's most valuable resource, psychotronic energy, would be collected and housed. The Dadaists returned in the hiding of a dimension known only as the absurd, absurd. And the East Village Art Cooperative returned to New York to begin work on a new piece made entirely of macaroni pieces, dog hair, and egg cartons. Over the years, through multiple administrations and mankind's inability to stay focused for any duration of time exceeding half an hour, the boy, the moon base, and the other denizens housed there were all but forgotten. That is, until now. It was another day at Moonbase Psychotronic. Days. We'd had many of them recently, and this day was another of the many we had been having. Where is Blah? I was going about my usual routine, measuring psychotronic energy levels, coming from Earth's orbit, and wondering why my trusted assistant, the Blah, was not here to help with the heavy lifting. Where is my trusted assistant? To help me with all this heavy lifting. I should not be so quick to make such judgments against my trusted assistant's loyalty. Perhaps he wants to reward my diligence and hard work by rewarding me with a deliciously decadent slice of his world-famous meatloaf. He does know my adoration for his skill in mixing ground beef, breadcrumbs, and ketchup into the most delightful of decadent mounds baked to distinctive perfection, and delivered with a darling dollop of mashed potatoes. Yes, I must not be so quick to judge, my most devoted assistant and divine of friends. Yes, it was another day of the many days we had been having as of late, and like most of those days, my belief in tasty treats being delivered by my most devoted assistant and divine friends was, was a pipe dream devised by my overactive imagination. Sorry I'm late. No problemo. Any reason for your tardiness? Yeah, I was doing you a small favor. Oh, really? Do tell. Well, I was having Murder Baby and Floyd de-louse me. Oh. Wait. How's that a favor for me? This way I don't annoy you with constant scratching. Yeah, thanks. Yep. No problem. Anyway, what we got going on? This may be interesting to you. Oh yeah? picked up a small pool of psychotronic energy emanating over Boise. It couldn't be that small if you picked it up through the Negatron goo. Well, it's pretty concentrated. Possibly some kid making some discovery on the internet or sneaking up to watch some movie after their parents went to bed. What do you think the source is? Think? Do I look like some kind of amateur thinker? I found the source right before you came in. What is it? That is a question best answered by unemployed elf on the bong. Bugs are empty, blunts are hollow. You might find this is hard to follow. There's a kid down there whose dad is square. Mom's in bed and I know where. There is a woman and there is a shaman. Who is the split man? Who is the vape man? It doesn't take much to reach the sky to blow my face in secondhand high. Wacky wee cravings? Eat pad thai! Pot. Parents. Police. Pot. Parents. Police. Boy, that was, um, that was, that was something. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's no way you're gonna make it under ten minutes now. Not with that attitude. 
Well, I'm just being a realist. Be a realist, but we can do this. I believe in us. Uh, well, if you say so. We do we jolla blood freak bip diddy bip did the floor it. Do you caddy munch buddy the cat ate the parakeet or we do we jolla pot parents police it is otherwise known sticky never appeared bip diddy bip in the pages of we do we jolla Michael J. Weldon's psychotronic encyclopedia of film. But wiki gun Rick on wick appeared in bip diddy blonde woo psychotronic video guide and the excerpt reads. TV watchers will recognize character actor Philip Pine as the dad in this enjoyable, well-made movie aimed at kids, but later marketed as an exploitation movie. Johnny, Robert Mantell, a loner kid, meets a friendly hippie couple who thoughtlessly get him high and drunk, which leads to much confusion and trouble at home and police involvement. The hippie in a cocaine t-shirt with a pickup truck and a pretty blonde girlfriend is a young Martin Margulies, aka Johnny Legend. He eventually freaks out on mescaline. I'm a bird, free and falls down the stairs. This color film has split-screen camera work, flashbacks, and a nightmare sequence. I have to be honest, that on my first viewing, I hated Pot Parents Police. I thought it was amateurish and boring. But on subsequent viewings, I've learned to love it. It feels ethereal and otherworldly, but also firmly planted in reality, if that makes sense, and truly unfit to be a part of the ocean of exploitation films released in the United States since the advent of the cinema, known as Moral Panic. A genre started because soldiers were coming back from the world wars with gonorrhea. But Pop Parents Police is less reefer madness scare tactic and more the burning question by way of the French New Wave. It has that same cinema verite feel of Jean-Luc Godard or Francois Truffaut, if they had ever decided to make an exploitation moral panic movie about the evils of marijuana. Philip Pine's film makes us feel like a fly on the wall watching his events unfold in the broken family he has created. Put articles and lectures on what to do when he masturbates and not one damn word on what to say to him when his dog dies. From the un available and distant father to the depressed mother hidden away in her bedroom, all the performances feel real and unforced. And in distant teenage son Johnny, Robert Mantell creates a character any teenager can relate to. He's awkward and shy, and the events occurring at home only add to his relatability. In fact, I can't think of another movie that has gotten being a teenager trying to understand the world so right. I don't want to go through a synopsis of this wonderful film. It is pretty basic, but I do want to highlight two scenes that I believe are a masterstroke in writing, direction, and acting. The first occurs as the title credits roll and Johnny gets out of bed. The scene is perfect in its execution as Johnny prepares for school. It is revealed that his parents are absent from his life and he is struggling in their disinterest. Philip Pine sets up the situation perfectly. I love the conversation between Johnny and his mom, the bedroom door acting as a buffer, reflecting the two's distance, and when mom reveals that dad didn't come home last night, Robert Mantell's reaction as Johnny reveals this isn't the first time this has happened. Finally, as Johnny starts to exit the home and tries to get some kind of response from someone, his sarcasm to being unheard is executed beautifully and is both funny and heartbreakingly sad. There's a vulture out here eating a bear. The second scene comes midway through, when the two hippies allow Johnny to join them in the woods outside of town for a little pot smoking and wine drinking. Philip Pine takes his time to develop the dynamic between the characters, with one-shot close-ups of each as they get higher, drunker, and celebratory. Just hold your breath for a few seconds. Nothing came out. What I tell you, the wine neutralizes the tobacco. It feels so real and again, relatable. A situation we have all been in where older adults accepted us and led us behind the curtain. Although their motives may be questionable, they do not wish Johnny harm and unlike moral panic films, the events unfold to a conclusion that is joyful rather than leading to a character's eventual demise. Pot Parents Police is a wonderful film, built to entertain, and it is misleading to claim it as a piece of moral panic exploitation. It should be watched for Philippine's writing and technique behind the camera, as well as Robert Mantell's performance as Johnny. Give it a watch. Pot Parents Police was released in 1971, and was also titled The Cat Ate the Parakeet. It was written and directed by Philippine and starred Robert Mantell. I'm just some guy named Jeff. 
and we are all psychotronic. <laughs> Polarize, neutralize, scrutinize. Equalize, belize, evilize. Brutalize. Utilize. <laughs>